Thanks to World Anvil for sponsoring yet another video. Thank God I didn't drive them away with the last one. If you somehow didn't know, World Anvil is an online platform you can use not just to create a world, but detail the ever-living shit out of it. In the coming months, I plan to handcraft a few adventure modules and import worlds into this painfully massive platform and share them with some of you guys. It's an amazing place to answer all the questions about your world you never would have thought of, like dietary habits of dwarves. I'm gonna dedicate way too much time to this. Go check out World Anvil, and for you serious world builders, here's a little discount. Today you're gonna learn about eels. Big space eels. From the future's past and beyond space, but also from space. Aboliths probably stood out to you because they're the second monster in the monster manual. Just behind this greedy bird bitch who needed two A's in a row to start their name. Let's take a look at their ancient history to better understand these slimy banana gods. Before there was time, before there was anything, there was nothing. And before there was nothing, there were monsters. I stole that dialogue. Then the gods came in, slapped their dicks on the table, and ruined the monster party for everyone. Essentially, at one point in time, before time, Aboliths ruled over everything with unrivaled psionic powers. At this point, the gods somehow didn't exist, even though their existence is reality. The way I've understood any pantheon, gods are manifestations and paragons of essential aspects of reality. In order for the ocean to work in the magnificent way that it does, a divine force wrote every fish and every current into existence, and that force embodies what it governs. But in any case, once the gods gained dominion, the aboliths didn't die. In a way, they can't. When one is physically destroyed, its brain has so much smart in it that the body gets recreated around the mind. Let me go ahead and explain their brains, because they're nothing like beholders or mind flayers. A mind flayer craves emotions and feeds on the feelings that a creature's memories invoke. Those memories get processed and cleaned out, like a psionic sandwich. I wonder what Mind Flayer Pooh is like. A beholder emits imagination and explores impossible realities because that's just about all it can do. Hell, its own reality seems impossible. An abolith gathers memories. Crystal clear, free range, non-GMO memories. Every experience an abolith has ever stored in its immeasurable think tank can be revisited as vividly as visiting your grandma tomorrow. Go do it, you fucker. Cherish the time. But with this library of memories, and the inability to die, they remember exactly when and how the gods kicked their asses into lakes deeper than Tartarus sauce. I'm starting to feel bad for aberrations. They're isolated pioneers in a strange and alien world full of stupid naked monkeys running around trying to kill them with metal and fire. Who wouldn't want to control this chaos just to save themselves from it? So that's all they desire. Knowledge. They really just want to know how to regain their lost kingdoms under the great deep blue. Considering the eons of memories their database has, they might already have a plan set in place. Hell, the Catalyst might even start tomorrow. There you go, another campaign idea, courtesy of the Runesmith and Evil Eels. My favorite thing about Aboliths is the fact that they're lawful evil. Evil, in D&D, just means harmful. Not all evil is malicious, and humans see change and humility as harmful to their own futures or self-value. Not to say they can't easily be cruel, or that this makes them any less self-centered. The word abolith means god, which means everyone in abolith culture just walks around saying, I am him, like they're fucking rap stars. Aboliths don't really hate humanoids or other natives on the material plane. Their fury is dead set on the gods and anyone who slights them. So they treat their employees with a strange amount of alien kindness. I'm gonna stop saying slaves now if that's cool with you guys. These slimy gods make their homes in lakes, oceans, water, anywhere that's submerged and dark is a joke that would get this video flagged. When they desire employees, they reach out to local creatures and learn those creatures' greatest desires. For example, if some fisherman named Bruce dreams of big booty bitches every day, the Abolith can grant him the promise of a thousand bitches with bodacious bums. Using some gross shit I'll mention in a minute, Bruce learns how to swim to the depths to meet this Abolith. And here's what I find interesting. Instead of being cruel and ripping Bruce's mind apart to get those memories, the Abolith just probes him. His brain, probably. 
Then he grants Bruce the psionic illusion of booty galore, so as long as the fisherman stays obedient and appreciative, he's fine. Their goals are a bit less complicated than, for example, the demon lords of the abyss. All they want is their kingdom back, servants and all. Another interesting thing about deep sea slime kings is their biology. Their skin secretes a thick slime that always keeps them lubed up and ready for action. If any creature inhales their personal lubricant, their lungs transform into fish lungs and they lose the ability to breathe air. They use this to help their newly transferred employees with the transition. We all know moving to a new place can be hard. If an ablith slaps you upside the head, you just straight up lose your skin. All of it. It turns into a thin membrane that makes you look like a glass frog. Having one epidermal layer makes sunburns deadly, so enjoy a very, very long swim. As I said before, abolith layers are almost exclusively in dark waters, but in the good old Forgotten Realms, there's a very inspired city called Zifu. Or as I would call it, really eh? Except I can't, because a tongue can't make that noise. Zifu is a big ass tower from the Far Realms that plopped down into the Sea of Stars on World Generation. There, the eldest abolith lives among other aboliths in a giant brood. This brood is called the Abolithic Sovereignty, which translates to Super Ultra Mega Gods. Let's play a quick guessing game. What do you think the eldest abolith is called? You guessed it, it's Carl. Aboliths are the most alien of aberrations when it comes to their reproduction, because they do it kind of like we do. They have a fish penis and a egg varginko, and they just sit in a dark cave doing the nasty solo style till an egg pops out. Or it works more like salmon than shark, and they just fill the cave with two types of mucus and sit there, feeling sinful. When the child is born, it retains all the memories of every ancestor before it. That's like cheating at life, man. I'm fucking jealous. I don't even remember a single moment in elementary school. Then the parent abolith will nurture the newborn for a few years and send them off with a strong mutual respect. Like eel, like sun. There's a rumor that mind flayers are time-traveled and evolved aboliths, because no abolith remembers the empire of the mind flayers. Which is an interesting detail, but I personally doubt it. Aboliths' nature, reproduction, isolation, and family-focused lives contradict mind flayers. This is what you face. We are your genetic destiny. We are knowing this is true power. You are considered too primitive. It seems to me that the Aboliths' means to their end would involve ripping open a portal to the Far Realm and having Big Daddy Insanity step through and tear the gods from their thrones. It's only fair, really. An eye for an eye. Because that's basically Aboliths. 